With super popular athletes come super popular athlete endorsements, which means super popular athlete endorsed video games. Yep, taking a random sports athlete and slapping their name on a title of a random game. I mean, why buy just baseball when you can buy Tony La Russa baseball instead, right? We'll take 20. Well, there are times where it's not just a regular old sports game and developers go above and beyond with the athlete's license to create some weirdo games. The most infamous example of this is Shaq Fu. Shaq has more endorsements than I do subscribers, so it's no surprise that this dude has his very own video game. In this SNES game, Shaq is in Japan for charity and comes across an old dojo, drink Pepsi. Shaq is then flung into the second world, where he looks hilarious running, by the way. The plot is quite literally the same thing as Michael Jordan Chaos in the Windy City, even going as far as both games using frickin' charity for plot convenience. You know EA published both games? Anyway, I'm not going to waste too much of your time on this. I know this game has been covered more than the seats at an AEW show at this point, and I really don't have anything new to add. It's a bad game. Shaq Fu is a fighting game. And you know how most fighting games make the main character or most popular characters very accessible and easy to use? Ryu and Ken in Street Fighter, Sub-Zero and Scorpion in Mortal Kombat, Mario in Smash Brothers, Bad Mr. Frosty and Clay Fighter, you know, all the classic fighting video games that everybody loves. Well, they made the bold choice in Shaq Fu to make Shaq the very worst character in his very own game. He's horrible. He has no reach and can't cover any sort of distance at all. Compared to characters that can teleport and can do a hundred front flips into a sword stab, you are very much outmatched. Hell, even the green monster that sprinkles Diddy Dust is a better alternative. What are Shaq's special moves? He could do this flaming kick, which looks similar to a normal kick that he has, just with a flame animation attached to it. You have to get real close to use it and it does very minimal damage. And you have this airbending destructo disc. Combining attacks from two bald animated monks sounds good on paper, but not here. This thing has a startup animation and does nothing really. The move is also a little weird. You do forward back forward punch to do it, but sometimes Shaq will throw out a punch, then the move activates, a sign of a poorly made game, which I'm not gonna go too deep into. You all know this sucks by just looking at it. So I try to beat the game, even going as far as to turn the difficulty down to easy. Pussy. And the game crashed when I got up to the Yeti. Yeah, besides novelty, this is worthless. But we ain't done with Shaq Fu yet, or at the very least, Shaq related games having Shaq Fu in the title. In 2014, an Indiegogo project was posted Shaq Fu. The Legend Reborn. The first Shaq Fu was terrible. One has to wonder why couldn't Shaq fund this himself? Oh, I'm kicking everybody ass. Kicking them. See, you couldn't even see it. See, that's that new move. I might give you the cheat code for that move. Oh well, it made backing, and upon starting this game, you come to find out that it's nothing really like the original Shaq Fu. You are not Shaquille O'Neal, famous basketball player. You are Shaquille O'Neal, an orphan that was thrown into a bag in a river and adopted in China where he meets his master named Yi Yi. I'm assuming he's called that because of his haircut, but he never takes the hat off. And of course, he is taught martial arts because China. Basketball isn't even a thing he ever does, and it's only mentioned like once. Don't be a fool, Shaq. I can give you all the money you could ever imagine. If I wanted money, I would become a basketball player, demon. Playing the game is different from the original Shaq Fu because this game is not a fighter, but a beat-em-up instead. To describe it in three words, mindless button masher. Which isn't always a bad thing. The game is fairly simple. It can be satisfying to beat up hordes of people as the guy from the NBA on TNT. The game tries some variety, introducing new enemies like this fat guy, this other fat guy, this other fat guy. Oh, another fat guy, huh? They eatin' good in this universe. There are also weapons like signs, this green thing, rocks to push, and seven kabillion barrels. There are these parts in the level where you transform into the Big Diesel or the Shaktus. Shaktus. Now I'm a giant actress who designed this game.
This is where the game throws what feels like the entire population of China at you. The Shaktus shoots pin needles and Big Diesel does anime rapid punches and has one big AOE attack. I don't really hate this. Sorry if I'm going against the grain in a positive way for once. It's not a good game by all means, but I enjoy my time with this more often than not. But it has to be said that this is still not a good game. After you reach the third level, you get a little tired of it at that point. Hey, look, they got my YouTube salary in this game. That's crazy. The game throws 7,000 enemies per screen. And while fun for a bit, the game is not mechanically interesting enough to keep me entertained for the duration of the game. There's even a section where Shaq calls out the developer about this. Stop, stop. Hey, game designer, get down here. Yes, the Shaq, I hear. Stop with the unlimited enemies. That's some free-to-play crap. I thought it was good idea. What do you think this is, Flappy Shack? Okay, okay. I give you something freaky fresh. And then they just continue to throw thousands of enemies at you. Like, there's no blocking, no countering. You have the world's most pitiful dodge, only one combo, and the attempts to add a variety are just copy and pasting the same things over and over again. Like, I'm kicking rocks down a hill to knock enemies over, and I do the same here, and then the same here. How many times are they going to utilize these goddamn barrels like I'm Donkey Kong or some shit? It's funny because in the last sections of the game, they introduce this fat enemy that you can counter like any other action game. It just makes you wish you could do it more. See, that's that new move. <laughs> Probably the most notable thing about this game is the story. Shaq is tasked to take out celebrities who are disguised as demons, each boss being a parody of a celebrity. Doing this automatically makes your game dated. Like, come on, Justin Bieber nowadays? Who gives a damn? That hate boat has sailed over a decade ago. Even when this game was released in 2018, it was outdated. Imagine 10 years from now, I make a game and the final boss is like the Haktua girl or some shit. It's just dumb. <laughs> Speaking of outdated, this game's dialogue is just full of dated internet references and memes that no one unironically says anymore. <laughs> Seriously, bro, do you even lift? Oh, God. T turn the game off, man. <sighs> Terrible. Another thing that was criticized was the over-the-top stereotypes, like Shaq's teacher, Yi, is very clearly a white dude doing his best Asian accent he can. Those kids just jealous because you such big boy. I mean, your thirds must be bigger than their heads. Your feet must be the size of- I get the point. Or how about these German guys that are led by Mel Gibson, huh? I can't decide whether to wear chaps or lederhosen to the cotillion. Or this enemy type that's a black guy who, we who weaponizes grape soda. Are you one of the new Ghostbusters? No, my brother. This here's grape soda. Sodium benzoate, dash of purple, and high fructose corn syrup to top it off. So you can run and tell that, homeboy. I'm no prude or anything. I'm not offended, and some of it does get a chuckle out of me, but this stuff is so low-hanging you'd expect to hear it in a middle school in, like, 2007, not a real video game. Even the ending is super unsatisfying. It's sequel bait. You have to take out one last celebrity, and that's Kanye West. Now, on my screen, there's something called Barack Fu. Out of curiosity, I played the first level, and it's in France where you fight a bunch of people that use baguettes as weapons and wave the white flag, while Barack's super move is calling in a drone strike. What? I like Shaq Fu The Legend Reborn way more than the original, though the game has the same internet reception as the original. And it's not bad. Probably why the game has such a bad reputation is because of the Indiegogo campaign. You can look at the comments today and still see people saying they never got their reward. I have no clue who the developer Big D's is, but I'm pretty sure this company was just made to make a D's nuts joke, and honestly, I respect them for it. This whole campaign just blatantly lies. We'll look through each statement in the game section to see how true any of this really is. Okay, play as Shaq. Yep, we're good so far, one for one. Intricately designed combo system that leaves room for a variety of fighting tactics. This is just a subjective thing. Like I can say this video you're watching right now rivals Citizen Kane in terms of meaning, but in reality, you guys know this is just some dumb shit I'm doing. The game has one combo. I, I can't let that slide. That's a lie. Pimp your character with new moves and abilities. Select from different fighting styles or combined styles and create your new discipline. Shaq is not customizable in terms of cosmetics or fighting style. 
That's a lie. <laughs> Challenges for even the best players. Sure, sure, I guess I'll give them that. Adaptive AI keeps the game exciting. The AI walks in a straight line to attack you. That's a lie. <laughs> Battle against hordes of enemies. Yeah, that, that's definitely true. Take the challenge up to a new level in unforgettable smackdowns against awesome bosses. The boss battles being awesome is the questioning part, but uh, I'll give it to him, I guess. Once you beat a boss, you unlock him and you can play as him in the game. The most blatant lie so far. I don't even have a comment. It's just it's just not true. Fight through the slums of Asian cities on rooftops of skyscrapers. Battle out inside buildings, CD nightclubs, and cause mayhem in the market. Not really true. I guess you can argue the opening level is an Asian slum, but the rest of the game is just doesn't involve any of that stuff. Smash enemies through the floor and leap down to a lower level. Barrage through walls and forge your own path. Smash furniture, toss enemies through windows, even collapse structures. Not true. The only destructible objects are some boxes and whatnot. A wide variety of melee, projectile weapons, as well as various everyday objects that could be used as weapons. Katanas, shurikens, baseball bats, the occasional basketball filled with the wrong type of gas, bottles, knives, and dozens more. Yeah, so that's a lie. There's signs and this giant green evil maraca and barrels. That's really it. Wipe out huge numbers of enemies at once. Hold down enemies with balls of steel. Create earthquakes of unprecedented power. Slam dunk baddies with ease. Don't know what any of this means. I'll give it to them because balls of steel reminds me of this old Duke Nukem video. Excuse me, who the heck is this? I've got balls of steel. Balls of steel, what is that? Modifiers that change your appearance and enhance your skills. This is like a half truth. Huh? You have Big Diesel and a shack list, but those things aren't mentioned here. And all this other stuff isn't there either. So I'll give him like half a point. Co-op gameplay. Lie. Build up your character and duke it out online. Lie. Discover secret environments that you might have missed. Not a thing. Host of challenges await that pit you against the best shack foos in the world. This implies some type of online component which isn't there, so lie. Well, 5.5 out of 17, around 30%. Shaq is a better free throw shooter than a truth sayer. How crazy is that? All right, enough Shaq foo for one video. Let's talk some soccer. It's football, no soccer. Jeez, sorry, football, all right? Let's talk some football with Gogo Beckham Adventure on Soccer Island. Now, this game is like a Super Mario. Wait, Adventure on Soccer Island? Soccer? It's football, not soccer. This is a game that was exclusively released in Europe, developed and published by a UK publisher and developer, and stars an English player. So what the hell is with this word? Screw it, I'm calling it soccer. Take it up with these guys, not me. Anyway, David Beckham has had his own soccer games before, but they were traditional. This one is David Beckham saving the day killing monsters with a soccer ball. You start out doing this overly long tutorial where you take two steps and get a text box to explain what something is. You must be some type of crazy to think I'm reading that out loud. The goal of each level is to get the soccer ball to the goal. The soccer ball is the main tool in this game, which makes sense considering David Beckham is a soccer player. You have to kick the soccer balls into the enemies in order to kill them. You can come across other bonus soccer balls to get throughout the level. It can be cool using the ball, but it's more annoying than anything, to be honest with you. Beckham can't really do anything by himself. He needs the ball to kill enemies, to collect coins, to end a level, to do his taxes, literally anything. You have to kick the ball into coins in order to collect them, which makes the simple act of getting the regular collectible more work than it really should be. Nope. The art style is charming and the level design is decent. You aren't going to run into anything overly too challenging or crazy. And overall, the main thing here is that you are playing a game starring a soccer player where you kill things to save this island. Besides that, it's, it's an alright little game. Don't really have too much to say. Sammy Sosa softball slam. I do love alliteration. Do you think Sammy Sosa has ever played softball before? He's not in this little intro video of the game. 
This game is a spin-off to the other game Sammy Sosa is a part of, High Heat. High Heat is so real. When you start this game, you are immediately greeted to these characters. These look like scrapped Mike Judge character concepts. You know this is an accurate depiction of softball when you have a dude that looks and runs like this. This is a simplified game of baseball. Nothing but the sounds of pure baseball. Big swing right here. Yeah, it's caught. Oh yeah, there's this announcer. The pro home! Hey now, it gets by! Whoa, it's out of control! Nothing but air! Here's the pitch! Big swing! Great hit! Shut up. Uh-oh, it's Ingrid! Uh-oh, it's Kira! Uh-oh, it's Juan! Uh-oh, it's Wendell! Yeah, that's, a, that's enough out of you, man. Holy cow! Oh! <laughs> Speaking of cows, did you hear that? Be alert, be alert. Are we on a barn or something? I'm gonna go in a replay and look around. Whoops, did not mean to look at this. He fit. Since this game is pretty bare bones, they try and make up for it with noises and talking every nanosecond. It's like ADHD, the video game. If it's not this goofball announcer or the cow noise, it's, it's the actual players. These guys just say stuff, but the number one thing they always say is how my shoes are untied. Okay, who cares? What is this, that one episode of SpongeBob? Who cares? Now batting, Sammy Sosa! I'm taking this one deep. That is not Sammy Sosa. That is some white guy. And when I say white guy, I don't mean modern day Sammy Sosa. The game has a tournament mode where you can participate with up to eight teams, and this is really the main mode of the game. The gameplay isn't really anything special. It's softball that occasionally has a flaming swing for a home run. The man, the myth, the legend, Sammy Sosa! Come on, myth! Big swing! It's out of here. I don't know if they were going for an arcade feel or not. I think pushing more into the arcade feel would be beneficial for this game, but it doesn't really do anything well at all. From presentation to bare bones gameplay, the only thing I can commend them on is the ability to customize players, which is something that some modern games don't even let you do. Also, Sammy Sosa's body type is called Sosa. Please tell me what this means and how I can achieve it. This was doomed the second they made this a softball game. Like who asked for this? This is like making a flag football game or a floor hockey video game. And this is the ending video after you win the tournament. It's just a bunch of, I assume, developers of the game celebrating while Sammy Sosa is at home counting the couple of dozens of dollars he made off the royalties for this game. Sammy Sosa High Heat Baseball 2001, catch it. It's so real. Quarterback attack with Mike Ditka. This is an FMV game, meaning full motion video. Essentially, this is a thing that was done mostly in the 90s where they would make a game by stitching together real life LimeWire looking footage. In Quarterback Attack, you have to avoid getting Ditka in your face, <laughs> wouldn't we all? Much like all of these FMV games, this game has a bit of a narrative. The star quarterback on the team is hurt, so they turn to you, the rookie, to have a great game. Once you start playing, it's unlike any football game you've ever played. I've seen comparisons to NFL 2K5's first person mode, but not even that does this any sort of justice. So you have control of the quarterback in this game, and I was fully expecting to tell you how awful this is, but honestly, it does something different and it's competent. You have to go through your progression as a quarterback and see who's open. You can't really force it to a receiver if they're tightly covered. What you see is really important, especially during pre-snap. You see linebackers pressuring the line, so I run up the middle just to see if it'll work, and it didn't, which makes sense. Having a good drive is pretty satisfying. Like I see my receiver break free, I throw the ball, and it's caught. You can get jump scared while playing this game because you could just be switching through receivers trying to find an open man and then ah! like a damn indie horror game. The game does have some dumb little quirks that add up. Like here's a play that's one on one. So I take a chance and the result is, did this man instant transmission in on the play or what? See, that's that new move. 
Where did he come from? Trying to scramble is just, I don't know. You press up to do it, but it works when it wants. Since this is an FMV game where you strictly play as the quarterback, there are long, long instances where you are not playing the game. As a matter of fact, this whole B-roll you've been watching since the last sentence started, there is no gameplay for me here. The presentation in these games is always the highlight, better or worse, but here it's kind of eh. That over the top factor like Scottie Pippen and Slam City has isn't really there. See, white man can jump! Ah! It's a lot more down to earth with this chicken mascot and whatnot. I mean, sometimes you still have the goofy stuff there, it's just way less prevalent. A little second longer, and you're going through the meat grinder. During halftime, you head into the locker room, and Ditka gives you a breakdown of how you played so far. Let's take a look at these numbers. You're completing over 50%. Now, that's good. Now, with numbers like that, we should be able to get some points in the second half. No interceptions, squeaky clean. I like that. Hey, you've been staying away from the rush. Keep dancing around. Don't let those guys get their hands on you. Man, I know we got a rookie in charge. This kid's really got the stuff. So it's up to the rest of us to get behind him. So we're gonna do it? Yeah! We're gonna do it? Yeah! What I wanna do is how we gotta do it! Yeah! My favorite part about this is at the end, all the players are hyped and try and squeeze through this double door with a divider in the middle. And there's this one coach who smacks his head right on it. Also, I don't know if they told these players that this was an open tryout or what, but these dudes are tackling. Damn. Damn. God damn. Jesus Christ. After winning, you get different endings depending on what difficulty you play on, I believe, and you unlock difficulties with each win. This isn't a great game and doesn't really have Dicka in it all that much, but I'm glad something like this exists. It tried something truly different and something we won't ever really see again, mostly due to the fact that FMV games aren't really a thing anymore. You can run, but you can't hide. Bill Lambeard's Combat Basketball. Yeah, this was a game called Future Basketball, but it was rebranded with Bill Lambier, a player from the 80s Pistons who was known for playing some of that good old school physical defense that they don't be playing today. Now, before I get into how sucky this game is, spoilers, I want to go over the lore. Yes, that's right. This game has lore in the manual. In the 1980s and 90s, there was a legendary bad boy of professional basketball. As the roughest player in the league, Bill Lambier was known for doing anything to get the ball. Unfortunately, the basketball league didn't quite approve of his competitive style of playing, so they forced him to retire. The year is now 2030 and Bill Lambier has mysteriously resurfaced as the commissioner of the basketball league. How? I have no fucking idea. He's as young and vigorous as he ever was in his prime. Some believe that he has used today's cloning technology, but no one can say for sure. One thing is for sure. His objective to get back at those people who forced him to retire and play basketball his style. His first move as commissioner was to fire all the referees, eliminate all the personal fouls. He has also allowed major companies to use the cloning technology to create an army of incredible players. The players wear armor and compete not only for points, but for weapons, explosives, and cash that are tossed into the game by the eager spectators. And finally, he puts himself back in the game. Man, I can't wait for this to happen in about six years. I can make clones of myself to get videos out faster. How much of an asshole do you have to be to fire everyone and just make everything based on what you like? Well, with a league of no rules, what does that look like? Like shit. The cloning technology definitely works because all these dudes have been cloned from the same mohawk guy with no basketball skill whatsoever. This barely even resembles basketball and everything feels terrible. Something as simple as passing is done in a way where the ball is kinda sorta passed in the player's general direction. Making a basket is just random and rarely ever goes in no matter the circumstance. It's pathetic. I got this one. Damn. Okay, I got this one. Damn. Okay, I got this one. 
Damn. Okay, I got this one. Damn. Okay, this one I got. Damn. This one. Damn. I got this one. Damn. This one, I got it. Damn. This one's going in. Damn. I got this one. Yeah, I went in. <laughs> like, was that an Angel Reese simulation? <laughs> what the hell? Nothing says great basketball like a 4 nothing game at halftime. Man, these players sure are incredible, right? Now, what about those weapons? Oh, you mean this thing that looks like a hockey puck and piss pills? I don't know what these are. What's the draw to this game? The fact that you could shove other players. See, that's that new move. <laughs> Let's leave this one in the past. Now, MMA legend Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson actually had a game. You probably think he'd be a part of a beat em up or something like that, right? But actually, an endless runner? Yeah, an endless runner. Mighty Mouse Dash. You control DJ, and I think you know how these games work. As far as how is this compared to any other endless runner, it's fine, I guess. I'm just getting started. My favorite part is when you get this power up and you can launch cars like the opening level in Sonic Adventure 2. And when you use a revive, this gets a laugh out of me. Oh shit, there's more! Once you've played about 10 minutes, you've seen quite literally everything the game has to offer. Even the other unlockable level is just the same thing with different set dressing. But we aren't done with endless runners, we have Ronaldo Kick and Run which lives up to the name because you are Ronaldo. I think he's bow-legged or something. And you're kicking and running. This one's better than Mighty Mouse Dash simply because of the soccer ball and its ability to open up different paths. It makes things a little bit more interesting and the verticality of the levels as well. But once again, it's just another endless runner. Messi also has an endless runner, but whatever, enough of this. Going back to Ronaldo, did you know he had a Java game where he had to go to hell to play soccer against Piccolo in order to save the world? Well, now you do. Shut the hell up. Before we get into the final game, let's talk about some outliers. Hulk Hogan's main event is a wrestling game, which would have been good for this video, but it's for the Kinect. I don't own a 360 or the Kinect camera, so... Oh well, brother. Same thing with this crappy looking Michael Phelps swimming game on the Kinect. Boy, I wish I could have done this. Doesn't this look fun? Michael Phelps looks thrilled. There's also Michael Jordan games, Scottie Pippen and Slam City, and Jerry Rice dog football, all of which I've covered on his channel before. So in case you want to see more stupid stuff, I got plenty of it on here. Ball. What's with all these basketball players having these weird games, by the way? The rest of the games I found were all really run-of-the-mill sports games, so if I happen to miss anything, write it down in the comments. Charles Barkley Shut Up and Jam. This is a 3v3 streetball game starring Charles Barkley. And this is not the game we're talking about today. Barkley Shut Up and Jam Gaiden, the unofficial official fan sequel to the original. I'm technically cheating by including this because it's not endorsed by Charles Barkley as far as I know, and I don't even know if Charles Barkley knows this game exists. But oh well, it's Slam Jam time. So how do I even explain this game? Well, Shut Up and Jam Gaiden is an RPG starring Charles Barkley, LeBron James' great-grandson Balthios, a dwarf who'd suffered an accident that left them permanently deformed, so they had to skin graft basketball texture to his face, and Hoops, which is Barkley's son. It's a shame when you realize the developers of Streets of Rage stole the sprite of Hoops and put it in their own game. How shameful. The story is... Is the year is 2053. Basketball is dead. I wonder if this has ties to the Bill Lambeard universe. Charles Barkley performs the very powerful chaos dunk in the middle of a game. The dunk is so powerful it killed everyone in attendance. Since that fateful day, basketball has been outlawed. 
Thus, every player is hunted down and killed, leaving Charles Barkley alone with his son and his thoughts. In this post-apocalyptic world of Neo New York, where if you can't slam with the best, then jam with the rest. But things start to turn for the worse when another chaos dunk is unleashed on Manhattan, thus killing everyone there. Charles Barkley is blamed and now has to discover the identity of these terrorists and take them out. Now, this is a shitpost game, right? See, my boy Balthios was just killed by Gatorade. But gameplay is surprisingly good. It's a turn-based RPG where you use attacks like free throws and jump shots. I swear these hurt. Dude, that's the that new move. <laughs> Each character has their own unique way of attacking to keep things fresh, like Barkley attacks with a basketball, which has a lot of timing meters, where the dwarf has a timer to get in as many attacks as he can. And you have to avoid taking damage with glaucoma and diabetes. The enemies are kind of like these crazy amalgamation of basketball monsters, Gatorade, and Bill Cosby. Jeez, this didn't age well. Speaking of not aging well, here's the sarcophagus of Kobe Bryant. Wow, that's uh, that's not cool now. Oh God, he's he's coming out. Kobe, I'm sorry. The story and writing, believe it or not, is actually the highlight here. The plot on a surface level is really dumb sounding but the theme of the game is treated in earnest. The game incorporates lore from Space Jam and even things like Joanna Man. But like I said, it's treated with sincerity and it can even make you laugh too. One of my favorite parts in the game is where you're in the sewers. This place called Cesspool X, a place where humans go who have had surgery to be more animal-like. You come across a snail who wants to deliver a love poem to a fox. You read the poem and realize it sucks, so you question the love interest to see what she's like in order to write a new poem. So Barkley, Balthios, and Vince Borg 2050, who was a cybernetic android of Vince Carter, write the poem and successfully get the snail and the fox together. Now all of that sounds completely fucking stupid beyond all belief. But I mean it when I say that this part of the game is filled with great character work and writing. The adventure is well worth it, and I won't spoil some surprises for this decade old free internet game made in RPG Maker, but I will say that the thing that is built up throughout the entire game is well worth it and, well, chaotic. Shut Up and Jam Guiding was made by Tales of Games Studios. The whole concept came from a little section on Space Jam's Wikipedia article where it questions if Space Jam is canon or not. The way it was written was pretty vague, so you couldn't really determine if it meant canon to the Looney Tunes or canon to Jordan's life. That's where the warning about this game being canon at the beginning came from. After this game was made, it got tons of success and notoriety, so much so that this game eclipses the original Shut Up and Jam game that I I mentioned earlier. So with much success comes a sequel. After all, this game was part one of a saga. But it gets weird in a bad way when they announced that they needed funding for this and they had a Kickstarter. We've already seen how bad these can go with Shaq Fu earlier, but at least that game came out. Part two would never come out due to a multitude of things such as bad management and a ton of overambitious ideas. This showed even in the Kickstarter, animated cutscenes like can you really? A Super Bowl ad? I know this is probably just a joke, but what happens if y'all actually hit this? This amount will only get you like five seconds for the Super Bowl. Tops. Years and years go on and the project was eventually canceled with the source code being put online. This is a dumb little meme game with a ton of heart. It wasn't really meant to be taken to this grand thing and I think that's the way a lot of us liked it. Barkley Shut Up and Jam Gaiden has cemented itself in internet history. But how was the sequel's idea of incorporating a Kickstarter? That's terrible. 